Hello and welcome to Printing with Your Stamp. Today we're working on pictures and wrapping paper. So if you already have stamp pads in your house, you can go ahead and use those and the stamps that you've made to create an image. So here I'm using some very simple shapes like the triangle to build more complicated shapes. I'm making a little tree here. So instead of cutting out a whole tree shape, I just built a tree with my triangle shape. And I'm gonna add the bottom of the tree with this little rectangle here. So if you want to, you can go with your stamps and make a picture. But the other project we're gonna look at today is making wrapping paper because December's a gift giving month. So if you're gonna print with paint, uh, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need your stamps, a couple of brushes, a couple colors of paint, and some foam sheets or some sort of squishy surface, squishy and flat. I got these foam sheets at the dollar store, but if you don't have that, there, you can also use a foam tray like this, just as long as it's something flat that is a little bit squishy. Now, since I'm gonna be using more than one color, I cut my foam sheets into separate little uh, spaces where I can keep my different colors. So first I'm putting yellow down on my foam sheet and I'm trying to make the paint kind of flat on there. Spread it out. Same with my next color green. Spreading it onto the foam sheet. I want to get the paint as flat as I can so that when I press my stamp into it, it just gets on the flat part of the stamp and doesn't get paint into the little grooves. So my last color here is red. And I'm using tempera paint. You can use tempera, acrylic, or, or even watercolor. But I found that tempera works really nicely. And I made some test prints. So first, let's look at the pineapple. You may remember from when we made this with a potato, it's a two-part stamp. So I'm gonna do the body first, the body of the pineapple. And I'm just making a pattern on my paper so that the pineapples aren't too close together. Got a little bit of space in between them. You gotta hold on to that potato and sometimes you have to hold the paper down. It might try to stick to the stamp. Once you've made your pattern with the bottom of the pineapple, we'll come back with our other piece and add the leaves on top. Here it is. Press that into the green, just tap it. I've got some paint on there, and now I can press it onto the paper. I'm trying to keep that flat part down. we go. Need a little more paint. So reload your stamp whenever you need it. And there we go. Got a nice little pineapple pattern on my paper. Next I'm going to try the melon. And you may remember that this is also a two-parter. I've got the rind here. And I'm going to do the rind first because that's the bigger piece of the two slightly bigger than the red part. So I'm using green and red here for a watermelon, but you could use different colors if you want to have a different melon. Again, I'm reloading my stamp whenever I need it, and I'm trying to make sure that my uh, melons aren't too close together. We don't want to jumble things up and have a nice spread out pattern here. Next I'm going to come in with the red part. Mmm, there we go. Those look pretty good. Almost good enough to eat. If you make any mistakes, don't worry about it. You know, it doesn't have to look perfect to look nice. There we go. So 
Now I've got my watermelon pattern here. Let's move on. Let's try the banana pattern. I did a little test there and I saw that three bananas looks pretty good together. I also did a version of this with just two bananas uh, to get in bunches. So two or three is a pretty good number. It's up to you. Whoops. Remember, if you drop it and make a mistake, sometimes that's okay. You know, you can still use it. Now the potato can be a little hard to hold on to while you're printing, so try not to go too fast. Woof. Dropping it again. It's okay. I'll turn it into a. I'll turn that mistake into a, a good thing. All right. There we go. So there's all three of my potatoes that I cut. All three of those patterns. And you may decide to add more. But when you're done, I'm going to go ahead and put away your paint so that it doesn't dry out. And clean out those brushes. Take good care of those brushes. Wash them until the water comes out clear. And you probably want to wash out your sink so you don't have uh, paint just sitting there in your sink. And when everything's nice and tidy, check your brushes. There we go. Now you can enjoy your paper, your either your picture or your wrapping paper. And I hope you get to use it this holiday season and have fun making it.